A little while ago, I published a video showing how to build a full carbon mast. Since then, I've designed and built a new hydrofoil specifically to fit that mast. The concept behind this build was to create a versatile, all-round free ride foil. Something that would get me back on the water, leave me satisfied, and let me focus on more experimental designs. In this video, I'll walk you through the full design and build process for this custom hydrofoil glider. There are two main methods to build a hydrofoil. The first is using a mold. This is the standard in commercial manufacturing. It offers high precision and fast production times, making it ideal for building multiple identical foils. The second method is shaping and laminating by hand, much like how surfboards are made, which makes it perfect for one-off custom foils like this one. For this build, you'll need a mast that you plan to use with the glider. If you want to build your own mast, you can check out my earlier videos where I cover that process. The materials used in this build were 4mm plywood, epoxy, high density filler, low density filler, and carbon tape. Plywood is a fantastic material for shaping. It's essentially high density fiber reinforced foam with the bonus of colored layers that help visualize 3D shapes. The best part is that it's cheap and readily available. I started by tracing out half the fuselage, wing, and stabilizer shapes. Using these outlines, I traced each layer of the blank. I made an outer cut line and used a jigsaw to cut everything out. ending up with two layers outlining the wing and fuselage, one layer outlining the fuselage and stabilizer, and two layers of just the fuselage. By stacking these together, the stabilizer sat one layer above the wings. This should help the stabilizer sit out of the turbulent flow produced by the front wings. Next, I built a simple gluing platform using two wooden boards. This setup allowed me to glue and screw the blank together while giving the wings an anhedral curve, a downward curve that improves roll performance and helps the foil follow the rider during turns. Once the layers were organized, I glued them together using screws to align and clamp everything. I centered and screwed the fuselage onto the platform added a plastic shim under the stabilizer to give it a slight down angle and started screwing the wings from center out. The screws on both sides held the wingtips down and preserved the anhedral shape while the epoxy cured. After curing, I removed the screws from the wingtips first If done right, both tips should spring back evenly. Then I unscrewed the rest of the blank. And just like that, I had a fully cured blank with an anhedral wing shape and a slightly down-angled stabilizer. The shape of the glider was now locked into the blank. Before shaping, I needed to set up the mass to glider connection. I marked where the mass screw holes would go then drilled 19 mm holes straight through the fuselage. I taped the bottom side and filled the holes with a mix of high density filler and epoxy. This prevents the bolts from compressing the wood and adds a waterproof barrier. Using a planer, I carved the cavity into the fuselage to fit the mast. I went four plywood layers deep, deep enough for a strong connection while leaving enough material for the bolts to grip. I flipped the blank upside down and drilled the bolt holes, starting small for precision and working my way up to 6mm diameter holes. I then test fitted the mast to confirm everything aligned. To get the mast perfectly perpendicular to the glider, I used 90 degree reference lines on the table and shelf. Once everything looked good, I applied Crisco butter to the mast and wrapped it in plastic. I set four layers 
of 12 ounce biaxial carbon tape into the fuselage cavity, inserted the screws through the fiber layers, and attached the mask, just tight enough to move it up and down slightly. I then poured epoxy around the mast, lifting it gently to help the epoxy soak into the bottom fibers. I filled the cavity to the top, aligned the mast perfectly and let it cure. Once cured, I removed the mast and trimmed the excess carbon. Finally, I filled the screw holes on the blank with low density filler and epoxy. The blank was now ready for shaping. I began by setting the size of the glider to the original outline, first with a grinder, then by hand for precision. Once I had a clean shape, I roughly sanded the airfoil profiles with a grinder. Next, I marked the cord lines along the wings and stabilizer. The trailing edge cord line was just below the center glue line and the leaning edge was just above it, creating a slight positive angle of attack on the front wings. Using 40 grit sandpaper, I hand-shaped the profiles for precision. The plywood layers combined with the screw holes made it easy to check symmetry. For example, I could compare the position of a screw hole relative to a plywood layer on both sides to guide my sanding. When finalizing the shape, I always remind myself to go a bit thinner since carbon lamination adds thickness. I wish I'd taken off an extra millimeter on this foil, but overall I was happy with the shape and ready for lamination. I started with the top side. First, I taped off the bottom to protect it from epoxy. Then I wrapped the mast in plastic wrap again, inserted the carbon tape for the fuselage onto the mast, and mounted the mast to the glider. I had leftover biaxial carbon from the mast build, so I used that on the fuselage. I pulled opposite sides of the biaxial tape to create diagonal angles in the lateral fibers, just like I did with the mast. This should help with torsional stiffness. Then I applied unidirectional tape to the wings and stabilizer, crisscrossing fiber directions between layers for added torsional strength. Once the top cured, I trimmed the excess carbon, cleaned up the edges on the bottom side, and laminated it with unidirectional carbon. Same crisscross method. I tightened the bolts all the way down to seat the heads flush with the carbon. To finish, I sanded down the excess carbon and refined the final shape. I taped off the underside and hot coated the top with epoxy. Next day, I did the same for the bottom and tightened the mass bolts to get him flush one more time. After the hot coat cured, I wet sanded the foil, starting with 240 grit and finishing with 360. Then I cleaned the glider, spray painted it black, added a few stripes, and gave the whole thing a final sand with 800 grit to smooth out the paint and transitions with the orange paint layer. And that's it, the glider was done. I mounted the glider to the board and mast, the connection felt solid, it felt promising. Now all I need is a windy afternoon to test out this flying sailing machine.
all right so overall i'm pretty happy with it when i built this foil i made the stabilizer a little bit bigger than my last gliders and i also gave it a little bit more angle i believe so this gave it definitely a lot more stability i could keep my weight a little bit on the front of the board during my transitions and it was more playful in the turns when i would roll into a turn it would naturally want to pitch up which helped with the turns so yeah i hope this gave you some inspiration for your own projects and i'll see you next time